Hey guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to set up traffic using your own domain name and Cloudflare for a little added security and IP obfuscation. The reason I wanna bring Cloudflare into this rather than DuckDNS is because if you're using DuckDNS, they don't actually hide uh, your IP address. So if you went to, you know, like dbtech.duckdns.org and you pinged it, it would probably show up with my uh, house's IP if I had that service set up. I don't, so uh, that's not gonna work for you. So basically what I'm saying is if you set up a domain name or a subdomain through DuckDNS and you give that to someone, they can then ping that URL and get your home IP. So that's not terribly secure. The way Cloudflare does it is a little bit better, in fact, a lot better in my opinion. Uh, they actually provide the SSL for free, so we don't need to uh, involve Let's Encrypt at all. So that's a huge load off that we don't have to deal with on our server. Also, because of the way um, Cloudflare does their uh, DNS stuff, they actually give you an IP address that they assign that can't be traced back to you, your house, your server, anything else. If you ping, um, you know, like music.dbtechdemo.com, um, dbtechdemo is actually a domain name I just registered for the purpose of this video. We're gonna set up music.dbtechdemo.com. If you ping that IP address, that is not me. That is a uh, Cloudflare IP address that is hiding my real IP address. So uh, that's why I wanna bring uh, Cloudflare into this. They add a lot of security, uh, both from the SSL perspective, as well as hiding your IP address and it just makes the whole thing much much easier so uh, in order to do this you're going to need a few things uh, first thing you're going to need a domain name uh, like i said i registered um, dbtechdemo.com on pork bun yesterday for less than four dollars for the first year then it renews for about nine dollars a year now what i like about pork bun is when you register domain name through them they actually give you a private who is uh, registration so if you go look up uh the, the who is information on dbtechdemo.com you're not gonna find my contact information there either. So uh, what we're trying to do right now is make sure everything is very, very secure and very cost effective. So um, like I said, you're gonna need a domain name. I would suggest getting that from Porkbun because they're cheap and they've got a lot of services built into that that a lot of places like GoDaddy charge a lot more for. So like I said, you're gonna need a domain name. Also, you're gonna need a Cloudflare account. Uh, that's also free and you're going to set up, you're going to point the DNS servers of your uh, domain name to Cloudflare. Uh, that way, all of the traffic that you push towards that domain will go through Cloudflare. Um, there are lots of tutorials online, I'm sure, on how to do that, but they've made it very, very easy uh, to set that part up. Once you've got your domain name and you've got Cloudflare set up and you've got your name, domain name pointed to Cloudflare, once you've got that, then we can jump into the actual uh, server portion of things where we're going to install traffic and we'll actually install a couple of apps so that I can show you that it works. So with all that being said, let's jump over to my desktop. Uh, again, I'm making the assumption that you have a domain name and you've already pointed it to Cloudflare. So let's jump over to my desktop and we'll get started on this. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. Uh, this is actually the Cloudflare website. And what we're gonna do is set up our domain here. Now, I've already changed the DNS records uh, for my domain to point to the DNS records that I was told to point to, to get everything set up for my Cloudflare account. I'm not gonna go through that. Cloudflare's got great tutorials on how to do that. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna show you how to set up your domain name properly. So we're gonna set up an A record right here. Uh, we're gonna select this drop down right here. We're gonna make sure that it says A record. We're gonna type in the at symbol and that by default is just gonna automatically fill in whatever our domain is for this account. Then we're just gonna type in our, our IP address. If you don't know your home IP address, this is the IP address that your ISP gave you. This is not the IP address of your server. This isn't the IP address of your computer. Uh, what you'll do is you'll go, you'll Google, what is my IP? Google will tell you what your IP address is. Put that right here. So I'm just gonna type in 12.34.56.78, just like that. Uh, the TTL is gonna be auto, that's fine. And proxy status, uh, leave that proxied. And go ahead and click save. We're gonna set up some C records here. So, or some C name records. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click C name. Now, the one thing that we're gonna need um, is something, uh, some way to access the dashboard. Now, by default, uh, that is uh, monitor.yourdomain.com. Uh, if you want it to be status or something like that, we could do that. Uh, I'm gonna set this up as monitor like so, and I'm gonna tab over and I'm gonna type at. So that way, this is setting up a domain name for uh, monitor.dbtechdemo.com. 
we're also going to leave that proxied. Now this and the C name is basically saying whatever I point this uh, record to, like I'm going to point it to dbtechdemo.com. Uh, so anytime I update the the IP address in this content area, it will automatically update that for all of the subdomains that we're setting up. So we're just going to put an at symbol right there. We're going to click save. So I want to do the same thing. I know I'm going to set up for, for this. We're going to set up uh, AirSonic. That's a, a music server. So, oops, I'm going to type in music. Um, and then over here, I'm going to type in at just like this. And I'm going to click save. And then one more. I'm going to work. I'm also going to set up a, like a, a little home hosted wiki. So I'm going to type in wiki and I'm going to do at oops at like so. And I'm going to click save. So now we have our main domain name set up. We have a monitoring domain name set up. We have a music domain and a wiki domain. So we've got all of these domains set up and ready to go on our uh, Cloudflare account. So once we're done with that, uh, what we can do is uh, I will want to come over to Open Media Vault. Uh, you can see here that I've got um, my port changed from port 80 to port 81. And now you'll have to move everything off of port 80 here. Now I'm doing this on a clean server. Um, so just know that I've got nothing on here right now. So what we'll do is we're gonna change that to port 81. If you're not sure how to do that, uh, what we'll do is we'll just get logged in here. We'll go to general settings right here, change that port from 80 uh, to 81 or whatever port you wanna change it to. Uh, set that to, port, to something other than 80. Um, I'm also gonna switch the auto log out, that, that bugs me. I know why it's there, it's for security. I'm just disabling it because this is my demo server. So. We'll give this just a second here to load and then uh, we'll go in and uh, we'll take a look at some shared folders uh, that we'll need access to for uh, for some of our configuration later. Okay, so um, now I have um, an extra, I've got an external hard drive that's 250 gigs uh, set up and mounted. It's ready to go here. Um, over here on shared folders, I have a configuration folder set up and I have a music folder set up. Both of those are ready to go here. Uh, I also went to the SMB CIFS here. I went to shares and I shared both of those on the network as well. Um, so then if we go over to our file explorer, you can see that I've got a configuration in here. Now I've already done some testing to make sure this would work. Um, these actually shouldn't even be here, but they are. Um, so I've already done some testing with uh, our music server and our Wikipedia entry here or our home hosted wiki. And then I put some music in here um, just so we would have that for our music server when it's ready. So uh, with all that being said, what we're gonna do um, is we're actually going to um, come over to Portainer. I actually don't think there's anything we need to do in here. I just wanna show that uh, Portainer is the only thing in here. Um, there are no stacks in here. Uh, there are no images other than Portainer. Uh, there are no networks other than what came pre-installed. Same thing with volumes. This is all uh, very bare bones stock, nothing installed. So now that we've got that, uh, what we're gonna do um, is we're going to go ahead and open up Putty or whatever your favorite SSH command is. And then I'm gonna log into my server. I'm gonna drag this back up here. I'm gonna log in as root, like so. Now what I wanna do, just make sure there's, okay, so I do have that there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an RM, RF, traffic, like so. Okay, so now I've got nothing in this folder. Uh, so I'll do a clear, and just to prove it, I'll do an LS, there's nothing there. I'm gonna do a, a make directory, oops, MKDIR and I'm gonna call this traffic, like so. And I'll do a CD uh, into tra tra traffic like that. Now I'm gonna create two files here. Uh, one of them is going to be a, a, a dynamic.yaml file. So I'll do nano, oops, and I'll do space and I'll do uh, dynamic, oops, dynamic.yaml, like that. So this, we don't necessarily, oops, we don't necessarily need this, but we're gonna have it just in case for later. Uh, all of this, all of the stuff that I'm typing in here or that I'm pasting in here rather, uh, this will be available uh, in the blog post that's linked in the description down below. Um, so, so jump over there to grab this so you don't have to type all of this out. So once we've got all that pasted in there, we can do control O to save, uh, press enter and then control X, that's gonna take us back to here. So the next thing that we wanna do here is we're going to create a Docker Compose file. So we're gonna do nano docker-compose.yml. 
So this is gonna be blank as well. So I'm gonna copy, actually, I think I've already got this over here somewhere. Um, I do. So I've got this in another uh, screen here. So, oops, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna paste this in here. I'm gonna make this full screen, oops. And I'm gonna scroll up and we're gonna talk about some of this. So uh, basically we're gonna start with the service. The service is gonna be traffic. We're gonna pull traffic version two and we're always going to restart it um, just to make sure that it's always running. So if it runs into a hiccup, it'll automatically restart no matter what. Uh, below that, we're gonna name the container traffic. Below that, we're gonna have some ports. Uh, now this will be the only time using traffic that you'll add ports to your uh, to your Docker Compose file. Moving forward, like when we install Aerosonic, uh, we're not gonna put ports in that. So just, just keep that in mind uh, as we move forward. So we're gonna have port 80. Um, that's gonna be just our HTTP port. We're gonna have port 8080. That's how we're going to access um, our dashboard, which I'll show you here in just a moment. And then port 443 is gonna be for all of your SSL uh, traffic. That's gonna be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash whatever. Um, so we've gotta have those three ports um, set up here. Also, one thing to keep in mind here is that we also will need to forward or uh, do port forwarding for ports 80 and 443 uh, from our modem or router uh, to our server's IP address. You don't have to do 8080, but you do have to do 80 and 443. Uh, we need those two ports to access the traffic on the network. So uh, make sure that you uh, do the port forwarding for port 80 and for port 443 from your modem or your router to your server. Below that, we're gonna have some commands in here. now. Uh, the API Insecure, this allows us to access our dashboard on uh, just HTTP or port 80. For the sake of security, uh, you should uh, set this to false, but for the sake of uh, just uh, demonstrating this and showing you how it works, we're gonna leave that set to true right now. We're going to allow it to be set to insecure. It doesn't matter, everything we do here is going to be on encrypted, on an, on an encryption, on an SSL. So this, this really doesn't matter, just know that that's what it's for. Also dashboard, we want this set to true or false. Uh, do, during the setup, you probably want it set to true. Uh, afterwards, you may wanna change that to false so that people can't go find all of your domains or all of your subdomains on your server. Debug is true. If you've got debug set to false, you're not gonna be able to look through the logs and see what's going on. This is your debug level. Uh, you can just set that to debug. There are different levels that you can set that to. Debug is probably fine for most instances. Uh, below that, uh, providers Docker equals true. That tells traffic to use Docker as its as its provider and talk to Docker. So that's why we've done that. Um, Docker uh, exposed by default. Um, you want this set to false. Otherwise, everything you put on your server is going to be. Uh, you can see it on on the uh, dashboard. You don't want that. So exposed by default. Uh, is false, we will set each of those to true as we install the applications. Or if you wanna go back and add um, the, the, the the labels to each of your uh, uh, containers, um, you'll expose it there as well. And I'll show you how to do that uh, when we get to that point as well. Um, the provider uh, file name, uh, dynamic, that's the dynamic uh, YAML file that we set up. Um, and that's, that actually has more to do with uh, when you've got uh, Let's Encrypt installed on here, but I put it there anyway, just to be safe. Um, the provider's Docker network, uh, basically any of the containers that you wanna be accessible from, uh, from the outside, from, from the internet that you give access to it, you're gonna have to put it on a separate network that we're going to create. Um, and then the endpoint web address. So your web address in this case, um, this is going to be, it's just telling everything on the web network to go to port 80. So that's all that is. Uh, then we've got some volumes here. Um, because we set up a traffic folder and we put the dynamic.yaml file in that folder, uh, this line is just fine. This dynamic.yaml line is fine. This is just telling it to communicate with the server or the hardware directly. So that's fine. Uh, it, the next line is networks. That's saying put traffic on the web network. Um, and then below that, we've got some labels. Now, this is uh, kind of what it's gonna look like when we add labels to other containers, uh, when we're going back and adding this to containers that we may already have on our server. So uh, basically what we're saying is, do we want traffic to be enabled here? Do we want this to show up on traffic? The answer to that is yes, so true. Uh, the traffic HTTP router API rule host. 
So this is the, the domain that we're going to use to access our dashboard. And in this case, I've got it set up as monitor.dbtagdemo.com. You're gonna to wanna to change that to be whatever you set up, whether it was you know dashboard or, or whatever it was you set up to monitor your traffic dashboard. That's what you're gonna put in here. Just in this case, it was monitor.dbtagdemo.com. Don't put in the HTTP, don't put in the www, just subdomain.domain.com or dot whatever extension you've got there. And then this uh, traffic uh, routers API service, uh, just leave this line alone. This is because it's on an internal API. Don't mess with this. And then we've got to call that network and say that it's an external network is true. So then we can go ahead and press control O, enter control X, and then we can do Docker. Actually, the next thing we need to do now that I think about it is we actually need to create uh, that network. So what we're going to do is do Docker network create web. Uh, web is important because that's what we said earlier in that uh, Docker compose file. So, and I've already created this. Um, so that's there. You should get something very similar. Just know that you have to create that next. Okay. So just to clean things up, I went ahead and did a clear screen there. So let's do a Docker compose up minus D and we'll go ahead and let this pull. Okay, so now that is done. So now let's go back over to uh, Stacks. So now traffic is showing up here, so let's open that up. And let's actually click on the log files here. Um, it looks okay, so let's take a look. Let's do, uh, let's put in our IP address and let's put in port 8080. Okay, so here we've got uh, traffic is running here and our web is running here. Our router is set up there. Everything here looks good. So let's make sure, uh, let's see here. Uh, dbtagdemo.com. Okay, so that tells us that our domain name is working. This is monitor.dbtagdemo.com. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up um, an application on our network. We're gonna set up um, AirSonic. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go over to here. I'm gonna go to dbtag. Uh, reviews.com slash blog. And then I'm going to come down to Aerosonic, like so. Well, that's weird, but okay. I don't know why I didn't have that saved there. But so here's what we're going to do we're going to grab all of this just like normal. We're going to come back to Portainer. We'll go to Stacks. We're going to click on Add a Stack and we're going to paste this in here. So this is just like setting up a stack just like normal. Uh, what I want to do now is actually come over. Um, so I've, I've just got all this pasted in here. Now I'm going to change some stuff. Uh, 998 and 100 is my UID and GID. Um, I'm going to say America slash Denver. Um, I can remove both of those. Remove all of that. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so now I just need to set up my two paths here for uh, config and music. If you're not sure how to set this up, I made a video on how to set up AirSonic. Uh, so that's why I just kind of blew through that very quickly. Um, what I'm gonna do is come back over here to my shared folders. I'm gonna grab this for my configuration. Oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. I'm gonna do this, go to inspect. I'm just gonna grab this, copy that. Uh, I'm gonna go here, like so, and then I'm gonna paste that in. And then I'm gonna type in uh, air sonic, like so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here, sort of. I'm gonna grab this, come back to Portainer, and I'm gonna paste that in there. So now that we've got that, um, now what I can do is I can come in over here and click on deploy. Okay, so now we have air sonic here. I'm gonna click here. Then I'm just gonna go look at the logs because it will take it a second to set everything up. And I wanna be uh, sure that I know when this is ready. So, okay, now it says uh, started application, that's good. So now we'll just go to 192.168.238 uh, and we're gonna go to port 4040. All right, so we're gonna type in admin and admin. Okay, so here you can see it automatically picked up uh, the artists that I put in there, so that's good. Um, but what will happen here is if I go to music.dbtechdemo.com, uh, not found, nothing there, so let's fix that. 
So what we'll do is we'll come back. Uh, we'll go ahead and close Aerosonic here since we're done with that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over uh, to Stacks. I'm going to open up Aerosonic again, and I'm going to edit the stack. And then I'm going to grab some notes over here real quick. Let me copy that. OK, so I'm going to put it right under here under Image. That's just where I like to put my labels. So here we've got labels, and we're saying traffic enable is true. We want traffic to handle this. So we're saying, yes, do that. Uh, below that, we've got traffic, HTTP routers, aerosonic rule equals host. And this is the URL that we're going to put our music server on. This is music.dbtechdemo.com. And we're saying that we want uh, it to be on the web network here. Our entry point will be web. So now that we've got that, uh, what we actually want to do here is come down here and delete the ports, just like so. And then we're going to click on update the stack. And we'll open this back up so that we can take a look at the logs one more time. And it's gonna go through this process. Okay, so now it says started application, cool. So now if I come back over here and I refresh, nothing happened. And that's because what we actually have to do is one more step. Uh, what we're gonna do is we'll come back over to containers. Uh, we're going to, oops, I said, I meant stacks. We'll come over to stacks and we'll go to Aerosonic. Then we're gonna click on Aerosonic down here. We're gonna go to duplicate and edit. Then we're gonna scroll down here to network. Remember earlier I said this had to be on the web network. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I know you could have done that in the stack, um, but I wanted to show uh, a couple of ways to do that. So just know that you can put it in stacks. Uh, you can put your network in the stack, but uh, if you run into this issue, like I have more times than I care to admit, uh, it's because I didn't put it on the web network. So I'll go ahead and deploy the container and I'll say replace. And of course, this will take it a second. And then once it's done, we're gonna open up the logs and watch it one more time, uh, just because it's got to go through that whole process of setting up the server and actually making sure the application's running. Should take about 30 seconds here. Okay, so like I said, about 30 seconds, so that's good. Now, if I come back over here and I refresh, So that's done. So now let's take another look at our router here. You can see that it's two now instead it was one earlier. Monitor.dbtechdemo.com. Okay, let's refresh. Now Chrome may have cached this, it didn't. Awesome. Okay, so now we can type in admin and admin. And just like that, now we have um, music.dbtechdemo.com slash index. Um, it's on a secure server here. If we look at the certificate, we can see that it is actually a Cloudflare SSL there. So let's do that one more time. Let's set up our little Wikipedia here. So uh, let's go ahead and close this. We'll go back over to here. Okay, so I've got some code over here that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and add a stack. I'm gonna paste this in here. I'm gonna name it. And then this is all correct. That is all right. Um, so what I can do now is I can go ahead and remove this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, just like I did before, I'm gonna paste this under image. So I've got my labels here. So I've got traffic enabled equals true, that's good. Um, I've got our, H our traffic HTTP routers, Aerosonic, rule host wiki uh, dbtechdemo.com and HTTP routers, Aerosonic encryption entry points web. So what we have to do here, this is very important. Anytime you set up a new application and you want it to be on the traffic system, this, where it says Aerosonic here, it needs to be different for everyone. So what I like to do is just make it whatever uh, my uh, container name is. So it's gonna be traffic.httproutersdotwiki um, or docuwiki.rule equals host. Same thing down here, it's gonna be routers.docuwiki. So every time you do one of these, you have to change this part right here to match the container name so that it's different for every one of these. Otherwise, uh, it won't know what to do and you'll actually drop, it will actually kill both hosts with the same uh, with the same name in here. So be, be aware of that. It fooled me for a while till I figured it out. So, uh, so this should be good to go here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and click on deploy the stack. So while that's thinking, I tell you what I'll do is I'll just go over here to dashboard. Right now this says two. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this open so that these two are side by side this time. Let this uh, go down here. We'll wait for this to deploy. Okay, so I'm gonna, so now automatically you can see that updated to three. Now it still isn't gonna work because I was dumb and I didn't actually add the networks in there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on edit here. 
We'll scroll down to network. We'll change DocuWiki in default to web and we'll click on deploy the container again and we'll click replace. And again, we'll give this just a second to load here. Cool. So now what I can do is if I come over here and I click on my explore on routers, you'll see that I've got wiki.dbtechdemo.com. So what I'll do is I'll actually just copy this. And I'll paste it. Now this is actually because I had already set it up once. I would have had to otherwise go to uh, slash install.php, but, uh, but it worked. So one thing I wanted to point out, uh, if you look at that URL bar, it actually says uh, that it's not secure. And the reason for that is there's something in the code um, on that uh, wiki page, uh, something written like in the HTML or something that is like HTTP colon forward slash forward slash that's hard coded into that. So it's part of the page is secure and part of the page isn't secure. So it's showing not secure up there, uh, but it is secure uh, as much as it can be based on the code that's written for that application. If I were to, just to show you this uh, kind of, oops, in real time here, if I go to, oh, darn it, let's go to, is it there? Yeah, we'll go to DocuWiki. Uh, we'll go ahead and edit the stack, or edit the, the container, rather. And I'll go to network, and I'll change this back to DocuWiki container, and I'll redeploy the container. And we'll go back to the dashboard here. This shouldn't change because, um, I've still got it uh, set up to be true and pointed here, but if I refresh this, it should give me a 404 page not found. Yeah, see now it's it's just not doing anything because uh, again, we did actually change that network. So I'll go ahead and change it back real quick. Duplicate and edit, network, DocuWiki, web, deploy. Go ahead and just stop that. We'll click replace. And now I should be able to refresh. Well, we'll give it a second. It uh, probably still needs some time to run or to, to spin up there. So we'll give this a second. There it is. Okay, so I just needed to let give that time to run. So now we have our own domains set up. Now keep in mind uh, what we wanna make sure of on each of these, uh, when we're setting these up, you can even go back and retroactive these. That's what I did on my home server. When you're actually going in and editing these, oops, let's edit the stack that you have to add these labels here. Each of these uh, in in the, the routers has to be unique to the container. So remember for AirSonic, it was AirSonic. For uh, DocuWiki, I replaced both of these with DocuWiki. And of course you wanna make sure that the uh, full domain name is correct here. Now, I just wanted to jump in here and say that there is one other way that you can do this. You don't have to go through stacks um, and you know edit the stack and go into the editor. You don't have to just do it uh, through the stacks editor here. You can also go into the container itself. Uh, it's like we'll go into AirSonic here. We'll go into duplicate and edit. And then you can come over here to where it says labels and then scroll down. And here you can see it says traffic enabled for the name, true over here. Uh, then we've got our second line with the entry points, which is web. And we've got our uh, routers ultrasonic rule and that's where we put in the host and the URL there. So that is another way uh, that you can do that. You don't have to go through stacks. You can actually come into the container and edit the labels to put those in there as well. Now, the other thing you have to remember is you have to remove the, the ports uh, section in here. Uh, remember earlier it was for this one, uh, it was like ports um, and then, oops, space. And it was like 40, 40 uh, and 40, 40. Uh, we don't want that. We have to make sure that that is all removed. Um, if we do go back and retro these, or when we're putting them in, make sure you remove the ports. Uh, traffic will we'll figure it all out all on its own. Okay, so one other thing that I wanna to touch on just real quick is if you've got an IP address from your internet service provider that changes periodically, uh, some, some places are nice and they give you a dedicated IP that's attached to your modem. Other places will change your IP address daily or weekly or monthly or however often they feel is necessary. <clears throat> If you've got one of those ISPs, there's a way that you can make your server talk to Cloudflare directly and update Cloudflare uh, to, to change your server or your, your IP address on your A record. So uh, the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna come over here to Cloudflare. You're gonna be logged in. This is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so what you're gonna do is come up here to the top right. You're gonna click on the little icon up here. You're gonna go to my profile. Then you'll go to API tokens. Now we're gonna click on create a new uh, token. We're gonna name this um, uh, server DNS. And then we're gonna have uh, actually three 
uh, permissions here. The first one is going to be zone. In fact, they're all going to be zone. Oops. Like so. Uh, this is going to be zone settings. Should be all the way at the bottom. And this is going to be read. The next one is going to be a uh, zone. And this is also going to be a read. And this one is going to be DNS. And this one's going to be edit. So once we've got that, uh, we'll go ahead and include all zones. We'll click on continue to summary. So now we've got our, it's just saying, hey, are you sure this is what you want to do? The answer to that for me is yes. So I'll go ahead and click on create token. So now I've got that token. So what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll just kind of save that in some notes uh, that I've got down here. So then what I want to do is I want to come back over here. I'm going to create a new stack. I'm going to add a stack. I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in here and I'll call this Cloudflare DDNS like so. And, and then I'll go ahead and put my API key in since that's what we generated it for. Just like that. So you're going to edit the API key. The zone is going to be whatever your URL is. That's your main URL. Uh, your subdomain, uh, I don't know if you necessarily need this because we're doing C names on everything, but I just went ahead and picked monitor uh, just so that we'd have a subdomain in there and proxied because you're doing everything through proxies. The answer to that is true. And then once that's done, you can go down here and click on deploy the stack. Okay, so again, the reason we did that is in case your IP address changes, you don't have to log into Cloudflare periodically and update it manually. Uh, your server will do it for you automatically. If your IP address changes, it will just ping uh, Cloudflare and say, hey, here's a new IP. It'll put that in there, and then you won't have to worry about uh, trying to uh, manage that manually. So uh, that's just a little extra thing that I thought about adding uh, after the fact, after I was like, editing this video, and I realized, hey, that's probably a good thing you guys want to know about. So uh, that's how to automate your DNS. DNS updates if your IP address changes. Okay, guys, so here we are. We're 31 minutes into this video, but we have set up traffic. We have set up a domain name and three subdomains that are all secured through an SSL that was provided by Cloudflare. And we've got IP address protection or obfuscation through Cloudflare as well. So our servers should be pretty secure. They're gonna block uh, suspicious traffic. Uh, we're gonna have that SSL and we don't have to worry about trying to uh, access different things on different ports or manage our own SSLs, any of that kind of stuff. So this really is the easiest way, in my opinion, to set up traffic with uh, Cloudflare so that you've got a very cost-effective solution and an easy way to access your server remotely. So uh, if you made it this far, congratulations, like seriously. I know this was a long video. There was a lot in here. We covered a lot, but if you made it this far, again, congrats. Uh, I, I've been at this all day trying to make this video for everybody. So if you found this video helpful, it really would mean a lot if you give it a thumbs up. Uh, it would really help me out a bunch. Um, also, if you're interested in this kind of content, definitely get subscribed. I've got lots of other ideas coming up for different server ideas and things to do with your server, that sort of thing. So if you're interested in this kind of content, definitely get subscribed. Also, uh, now that I've hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel, I feel like I can kind of officially call myself a YouTuber now. So I wanna actually start promoting a couple of things. One is coffee and that is a, kind of a tip jar kind of application. There's a link for that in the description. If you find this video helpful, you wanna send me a couple of bucks to support and say thanks for the video. I'll have a link to coffee down there. Also, I've got a Patreon set up where uh, if you donate $5 a month, you get access to a patrons only uh, Discord server where we can chat about just whatever you wanna chat about. So if you find the videos helpful, you wanna help me out, there's a couple of ways in the description down below where you can do that monetarily. So uh, with all that being said, thanks so much for uh, for your support up to this point, for making it this far in the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.